Bitch, I am Bad Bunny. What you mean? Hey, you know what I got right here? You see this right here? Mira? Vino Tinto. Of That's, Mal- That's a Malbec right there. That's a Malbec right there, baby. That's, That's a Malbec. A Malbec. Diego. I don't know the words. Damn, your horse. Damn, your horse. Damn, your La final que perdimos, cuántos años la lloré, pero el show se terminó, porque en el Maracaná, la final con los brazucas lo volvió a ganar papá. Muchachos, ahora no volvimos a ilusionar, ya ganamos la tercera. Somos oh, campeones mundial, but we fucking did it. I can't fucking believe it. I honestly am just shocked straight to my fucking core. I really, I really didn't know. I mean, I told you guys, I think I said it on the podcast. I've been waking up 30 minutes before my alarm at like 6 30 in the morning for like the past week. I listen, my voice is fucked. It's yes. fucked. It's fucked. My voice is fucked. This jersey, it smells like ass. Ed Truco. Ed Truco. Actor Argentino. He's in... I met him after uh, Argentina advanced from the group stages with Josh. Josh, your younger brother, told me to fucking go out and get a drink with him. So we went. And we met this guy named Ed Truco. And he was wearing a jersey that he has not washed since the Copa America. Since the fucking Copa America. And he says that his girlfriend says it's disgusting and it smells nasty. So I stopped washing mine. And now this bitch smells like ass. Mm. You know how hard it is to get play when your jersey smells like ass? It's, it's hard, hard enough for you already. It's hard enough for me already. Damn. I'm so devastatingly handsome. These women are afraid to talk to me. It's making it harder. I, I it respect making it. making it harder. I respect Immensely. It. Immensely You, up, you upped the difficulty on the video game. You said, no, this is too much. I had this- to. Let's take it to uh, shit. I can't remember my Fallout difficulty difficulty settings back in the day, but nightmare setting. That's what you did. That's what you on right now. But it ain't no nightmare for Argentina. I'll tell you that. Jesus it Christ! Is. It's the fucking dream. It's, it's the impossible dream. dream. La ilusión. Everything come true, baby. It is it. And como no me entró. Do you understand what that means? No, no me entra. No me entra en la coco. Or in el coco. It doesn't fucking fit into my fucking melon. It doesn't, it mm. doesn't, it has not registered yet. The closest that I've come, okay, you want a story time. Story time, that's what you're all here for. That's right? why I got like, the mail back here. Yeah. Yeah, we don't want tactical analysis tonight, right? We all no, saw no. the game. It was a don't banger of a game. Jake and I took pro- care of them. Exactly. Buenísimo. Fantastic. You want tactical analysis? Go talk to them. I was hammered. Link okay? down below. Right now, I'm going to tell you, yesterday I was working, right? I do catering. So I was catering at this event out in like uh, Connecticut or something. Like we drove an hour and a half to this event with Connecticut or in Connecticut. And I was with these guys uh, from my catering company that I don't really know that well. They're nice guys. They're my friends, but I don't know them well, right? I can't be myself around them. So when I tell you that I stopped catering to take a piss, I took like a five minute piss and like the fact that we were in the finals hadn't even registered with me yet. Like Croatia versus Argentina had not, I had not metabolized that. So yesterday when I was taking this piss, I started to cry. And when I say cry, I mean my tears. Well, it wasn't like one dramatic side tear. It was like both eyes from both sides. It was bad. I was like, Mm. oh my God, I'm going to walk out of here. They're going to think I'm doing drugs or like, a sociopath and i was like i can't let these people know so i cut that shit off like i just put you know i put my business inside my pants and i like you know at the risk of pink eye i was like oh and i was like oh pink eye and i was like oh. but i was crying so hard i couldn't do anything i was like oh. it was fucking brutal and then today dude it has not registered with me yet i started 
I teared up a couple times on the train, on the train ride home. After the game. About 30 minutes ago. Mm, After the game. I'm not going to I'm going to be completely honest with you. I met up with some friends, and they were friends with a really bad Argentine woman. So I was hanging out with this Argentine woman simping for about an hour and a half. Josh will tell you, I tied her shoes. It was really bad. Oh, was no. Okay. Keep going. Um, so, yeah, I, uh, <sighs> I met this woman. So I was in pretty good spirits. Um, I just left. On the trade ride home, I watched an interview with Scaloni. And it had Diego in the background, Diego Maradona, for those of you that um, have been living under the rock for the past 40 years. Um, it had him and he was saying, chicos, queridos, estoy en la cancha con ustedes. Aunque estoy arriba, estoy con ustedes. I don't know if that's the direct quote, but that's the sentiment, you know, even though I'm not here. Wait, wait, wait. I'm... I missed the first part. It was like a recording or something. So, yeah, the, so I was watching an interview with Scaloni. So Lionel Scaloni said a couple, like, things in an interview, and it was very inspiring. And then in the background, it was playing this quote from Diego Maradona, where wow. Diego basically essentially says, while he was still alive, he's like, even though I'm not playing with you guys, I'm up in the stands, but I'm with you. I'm here. Yeah. And it was playing that, and I teared up. It was bad. Damn. There were these, there were these Asian women in front of me, and I started like, I mean, like some tears started running. I like wiped, and I looked up, and they were like, "What's wrong with this man?" While I was tearing up on the train, and I did not give a single fuck, dude. It was, it was absolutely beautiful. Like, what do you, what do you want me to talk about? You want me to talk about the bar? You want me to talk about Times Square? What do I, what do I, what do I say? Do I talk do about the game, start, dude? I want to what know he, first what what did Bernard say? What, what did your Bernard father say? say? I could father I say? I could barely talk to him. I mean, when I called him, Pia, my stepmom, answered the phone, and she was like, "Ganamo, ganamo, querido," and I was like, "I love you, I love you, Pia, querida." Let me talk to dad, and I talked to him a little bit, but like I couldn't hear him. I couldn't. It, this was criminal, but I couldn't hear him over all the fans. So I was like, we were speaking in like broken English and Spanish. Like just, I mean, I was losing my mind. Like, like I said, it didn't, it has not entered my head yet that we've won. Right. Like when, when we lost against Germany in 2014, I was, I was devastated. I was absolutely devastated, like murdered. I, I told you guys, I still think about Neuer kneeing Iguain in the face and all the missed goals and like the goals that didn't count and, and like the performances that they gave because they played really well. And I'm I'm still devastated by that to this day, to this very day. But I mean, I thought that the payoff would be huge and that I'd fall to my knees crying. But dude, I've just been jumping and like the happiness has been like so overwhelming and all the Argentines have accepted me, which is something that I've struggled with for so long at the risk of, of being too emotional and being too dramatic for the pod. But like, I mean, in school in Texas, when I would speak Spanish, everyone would be like, oh, so you're Mexican, you know? Oh, you're speaking, you're speaking Mexican right now. And nothing, nothing against the Mexicans. I love the Mexicans. All my, all my fucking friends from Texas, but you're fucking Mexican. My best friend on the face of the planet is a fucking Mexican. Like, I love you guys. I love the Mexican culture. I love it. I'm not Mexican. And the fact that they fucking welcomed me in, everybody's calling me Macalister. Everybody's calling me Macalister and like grabbing me behind the head and like grabbing my hair and we're jumping together. We're sweating together. And like, I've got Fernet in my hair. I've got champagne all over my shirt. Like, look at how stained. You can't even see it. Ah, uh. fuck. They look, there's a shit ton of like Fernet stains and like just people were popping bottles everywhere and like throwing shit. It was... It was absolute madness, dude. Probably wasn't and, the only thing popping. But um, sorry, it's family friendly. Hey, it's I, true. I, I lost control. It's the Malbec. Um, <laughs> it's the glasses. <laughs> so uh, I don't know if you know, but um, your your sister apparently had a very uh, emotional response to Argentina winning. I'm sure you guys have 
chatted a little bit, but uh, I heard secondhand. Obviously, I wasn't with her. I was watching the game here, but I heard that she she started crying after Argentina won, which is, I mean, whole family was probably just like. I don't I can't I can't relate in the sense that like the closest thing my family's ever experienced and this ain't about me but it's probably like the Cavs no, winning it is. it's the Cavs winning but like that's not like national you know what I mean it's just like no, my but dad's the, the hometown ca- the Cavs winning it's the same principle it's the same principle it's it's a team that you would never expect that did it against all odds it did it against all odds and, and LeBron did it to bring it home baby he didn't do it for him. He didn't That's do it for his point. own reputation. Sure, that fucking helps. Don't get me wrong. Like, he's he's incredible for that. And that cements his legacy. But he didn't do it for him. The city of Cleveland loves him because he did it for them. He did it for them. Just like Messi and Las Calonetas lo hicieron. We did it for 45 million people back in Argentina that are suffering from inflation. Toxic socialism, corruption, crime, South American political disaster we're suffering from. And they brought it home. They brought it home for us, for them. I don't I don't know any of that. Yeah. Thank God. Thank God I'm here. But but those people do. Los Argentinos, they know that. The Cavs know that. It was suffering. The city hadn't had a title for how many years? Over 50 years, right? Ever. Ever. Ever in their life. Argentina's been without one for 36 years, and it couldn't have come at a better time. It couldn't have come at a better time. So you do understand. Don't 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 sell that shit short. Yeah, the, the World Cup is obviously a lot fucking bigger deal. Yeah. But the sentiment is the same. The sentiment is the same. And, dude, you know what? My sister, she does not cry easily. I am the emotional one in the family. I I am definitely the emotional one. I cry. Right. I mean, you 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 know this. I cry all the time. I wear my. You're heart both on actors, my so y'all y'all We're can be actors. expressive. But yes, we can be expressive. We can be very expressive. Ana, Ana, though, Ana, Anita, querida, she she's not expressive, and the fact that this means so much to her. Like that shit, that's that's just got me on the edge of my seat here. Like, I mean, my voice is breaking right now because I, I didn't know it meant that much to her. But she's like that. She's like that. She doesn't let you know it means a lot. No, she likes to keep it on the DL. You know what I mean? She likes to keep that shit on the DL. But knowing that that means that much <laughs> to her, that we have that shit in common, like you see that shit got me crying right now, bro. I didn't know that shit. When I talked to her on the phone, it didn't sound like she was crying. She was like, yeah, we bought those motherfuckers. Fuck the French. And I was like, ah, that it. Well, I she didn't write know about that. that too, but. Why is she right about it? But she didn't let on. She didn't let on as how she was really feeling. But no, I Eileen told me that. My girlfriend told me that for the, you guys listening. And I was like, that's pretty, that's pretty sick. Eileen texted pretty sick. me. I'm not going to lie to you. Eileen texted me. This was bad because I know Eileen was just trying to be um, supportive and oh, I'm uh, scared. a loving friend. She texted me and she was like, uh, you want me to read you the exact text? It was wild. Um, she said, let me go through. I had 72. Please tell mid- me she didn't say, like, Mbappe was so good for Argentina. Like, did she fumble no, it no, that no. bad? No, okay. no, 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 no. Okay. No, she was, she was very supportive. She was very sweet. Um, <laughs> that being said, she texted me. She texted me at noon. So when Argentina was up two to zero and she said, oh. they got this, <laughs> she said, they got this. And I saw that shit and I went, there's a whole lot of game left to play. And then Mbappe scored two. And I was like, hijo de su puta madre, hijo de su puta. I'm literally, I was like, I'm going to ghost her if, if we do not win this. And then we did. And I sent her text message back, but holy fuck, dude, that shit terrified me, terrified me to my, oh my core. God. Dude, so I want to ask you some specific questions about like, like take everybody through the vibe of how it was at the bar that you're watching at. But before I do that, I just want to say you and I are very similar in that way where it's like, we don't like to jinx shit. You know what I mean? Because I had people texting me too. I had, I mean, shout out Albert. I had him texting, dude, Argentina, they look so good. They got this game on lock. I literally saw the text and I was like, I ain't saying shit. Because I know how this goes. I know how this goes. The second you start 
posting all over social media, already throwing up middle fingers with the French flag emoji next to it. That's when the universe says, oh, okay, you need some humble pie right now. I'm going to give you a double serving. And that's what happened. That's that's how I, bro, shout out to Umman. Love you, Umman. But bro, you were texting me too soon, dog. Too soon. He was texting me in the 40th minute. I was like, we need to slow down. There's a lot of game down. left. So so take take me through like what was going on in the bar. Obviously, it had to have been like ecstasy when Argentina goes up second uh, or two nil. But like, just walk me th- walk me through all the goals, all the events. We can go right down to penalties. Like, what was the okay? Line? All right, all right. I'll walk just you through. Sprinkle you know your, your personal feelings in there as well. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm I'm gonna pull up the uh, the match stats just so that I know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> No, ge- genuinely, I need to recount this because I'm gonna. I'm not gonna lie. I was less than sober when I went through this fucking game. All right, so brother, last uh, the entire game. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Do you? Dude. I'll, I'll I'll get his bitch. Let me let me react to this. I'm gonna get his bitch ass in here because yeah, that yeah, dude, yeah, yeah. that dude jumped, sang, fought like an Argentine the entire game, and he caught the vibe perfectly. Let me tell you. Let me tell you, he caught the vibe perfectly. His buddy, Ethan, I almost called him Etan. I mean, he's, he's Taiwanese. If that's his name, that's his name. He's Taiwanese. He wants us to call him Etan. And I'm like, your name's Ethan, but I call him Etan sometimes. Anyway, that's not the point. The point is, Ethan was fucking, exactly- you know, celebrating like a lunatic. Josh, he was there. He was He was celebrating, but the man got worried. He was pressed. So I, w- I was very proud of him. He suffered like an Argentine today, which that is, in essence, the vibe. You want to talk about the Argentine vibe? Yes. You want to know what it's like to be an Argentine fan? Yes, we're great. We have now we have three stars, right? We have a pedigree. We have a World Cup pedigree. We have um, the two best players in history, in my opinion. That's open to interpretation open argument you're all wrong but you're entitled to your wrong opinion it's not so baby it's not open argument is that open argument look we know suffering ser argentino ser hincha de la albi celeste es sufrir to be argentine to support the albi celeste to support argentina is to suffer cuz guess what we only beat oh, yeah. australia 2 to 1 we only fucking made it through against the Dutch on penalties again after 2014. We lost. We played like shit the entire 2018 tournament, and then we lose to the champions four to three. And now we go up against the champions two to zero, and then we drop two goals. We go up in extra time, and then Mbappe scores a fucking another one, and then we have to go to penalties again. It's suffering. It is suffering, pure and simple. Mate, mm-hmm. mate, the tea that the Argentines drink, it's green. It's dark. It's sour. It hurts. Fernet, the liquor that we like to drink, it's dark. It hurts. You have to cut it with Coke, and even then it tastes like shit, but we love it. It's sour. It hurts. It's suffering. Malbec. I'm sure you can attest to this. You're drinking it right now. It's got a good flavor. It's got a good aftertaste. But I'll be damned if it isn't one of the sourest and most bitter and dry wines that you're going to have in your life. Why do we like that? Well, my mouth dry right know. now. Your mouth dry as fuck. We are masochists. We are masochists. Mm-hmm. And it is what it is. Ser argentino es sufrir. And that's what this game was. We went up the first goal on a penalty. So immediately, that was bittersweet because... First thing in my mind was everybody's going to be talking about how this is a penalty. Like if this game stays the same right now, oh, Argentina won on a penalty. So I'm sitting there, Messi scores the goal. And of course we all scream 450 Argentines lose their mind and I'm there, I'm jumping. But you know, after a second, I like sit down, everybody's still chanting and I'm just watching the TV. Like I'm never going to hear the end of this. I'm never going to hear the end of this. I know all these French fucks are going to be talking shit. All these Real Madrid simps are going to be talking shit about Messi and all this yada, oh, yeah. yada, yada. And then, you know, we score the second one, which was a masterclass. Fideo, Julian Alvarez, mm. queridos, queridos. Tell me who starts above him in Manchester Beautiful. City. Riyad Mahrez doesn't. 
Riyad Mahrez does them right now. Who? Julian Alvarez? Julian Alvarez on the right wing. Who's Alvarez or McAllister? Alvarez. Um... Alvarez gave Di Maria that pass. Look, how about we save this for the Premier League later? How about we save that okay. for later? Okay. Yeah. Alvarez gave that pass incredible. The bar lost their minds. I'm not kidding when I tell you that I have Fernet and Beer, Heineken, Modelo, lo que sea, anything, all kinds of beer that they were serving. It's all over me. It's in my hair right now. It's it's on my face. Like I could have looked up, it was like snowing in a fucking Hallmark movie. Just beer raining from the sky. It was insane. People were pushing. People were shoving. It was insane. Of the, I mean, dude, even the women. I've never seen women lose their minds like this. It was incredible. For all you ladies out there, for the few ladies that are out there watching this, queridas, eso fue lindísimo. That was incredible. There were women bodying me in a mosh pit. It was insane. That being said, Dang. when I tell you that up until that point, I felt like everybody in that bar had a pretty high soccer IQ. We Uh-oh. started singing probably 10 minutes, five. No, you know what? Five minutes. Call it five minutes before Mbappe scored that goal. Probably five the penalty, minutes. The first one? Oh, yeah. Before the, the French volley. came. Okay. No, before the French came on the counterattack, we were singing. And we were singing bad shit. We were singing bad shit. You know, you know when it changed was when we started singing songs decrying the French. I'm a very superstitious man. But when I tell you mm. that it was me and probably three other guys standing watching the game like this while everybody else was talking about Mbappe, Chupa, Huevo. You know, un momento de silencio para Mbappe. A moment of silence for Mbappe. Mbappe can suck my balls like terrible things. I was like, wow. We've still got a whole lot of time left to play. And immediately, immediately, dude, the French came back. And when I tell you that it was one of the most terrifying things that I've ever seen in my life, I got flashbacks. I was like, oh, my God, this is just like Germany. Because anybody who watched Germany remembers Argentina played like gods. We played incredibly. We had more attempts on target. We had more possession. We had more offensive challenge challenges. We have more chances created. We had better defense. It was incredible. We played immaculately. And one moment of brilliance, one moment of brilliance from Mario Goetze ruined my life. For the last eight years. Nightmares. Pesadillas. Se dice en Argentina. Nightmares. It gave me. I still think. I'm I'm watching the goal in my head right now. Romero. Romero was an incredible goalkeeper of that tournament. And he was ruined after that goal. It ruined his ego. And it broke Iguain. And I'm I promise you. We're going to do a solo video about Iguain soon. Okay. I want to do a special. I want to talk about that man. He deserves a lot more credit than we give him. But that match broke him. That being said, the French counter here, it was like a tidal wave. And I think everybody can agree on that. Argentina had moments here and there. But up until that 90th minute, the French dominated. The French dominated. The first 45 belonged to Argentina. The second 45 I'll tell you what, the second 40, Argentina came out of the gate swinging. But the first 45 that, looked like Waterloo. Yeah, it looked like 100%. The of the they were getting flashbacks. The French looked weak. They looked they weak-minded. But it takes mm-hmm. a strong constitution to do what the French did. And guess what? Mbappe, mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you right now, Mbappe, he's that guy. He's that guy. Mbappe is that guy. He's that fucking guy. Yeah. He's that fucking guy. He's got it like that. It's infuriating. It is infuriating. I can't stand him. That being said, he's that guy. He's the man. And France better get it together with him because if he doesn't win another World Cup, 
he might never surpass Messi. So better get it together because Paris Saint-Germain not doing anything special for him. All the achievements that he's gotten in uh, PSG right now off the back of Messi and Neymar. Not that he's not incredible. The man's insane. But a hat trick in a World Cup final? Not enough. Not enough today, baby. Not enough today. And guess what? Which is crazy. Which is insane. It's insane. But nobody's going to remember that hat trick. I'm going to tell you right now. Nobody is going to remember that hat trick. They're going to talk about it for sure. But guess what? La verdad está en la papa. The reality, it's right there on your plate. Argentina, campeones. When when we went to penalties, I mean, look, I if if you've heard anything that I've said to you in the last, what are we doing, 30 minutes, 30, 50 minutes right now, right? You can imagine what the third goals were like for both teams, right? What was it? It was two penalties for France. Yes? Am I crazy? Was yes. I hammered? The, the third... France goal is a penalty. The second one is Mbappe, crazy half volley. The first and then one Messi, is also a penalty. Messi was the was the third Messi's one. Messi's like for Argentina rebound. Win. Yeah, off Lautaro's shot gets blocked. Like that know. shit was insane. I didn't think it went in. Everybody, the bar exploded, and I didn't think it went in. And I was standing there like I had I had like two guys next to me, and we were like grabbing each other, and I was like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> No, and then they showed the replay and it went in, and I was like, ah. "I've had Josh." Dude, that's Josh, what Victor and I were doing. I was like grabbing Victor. I was like, "Oh!" <laughs> we're like, "Oh it. shit, he blocked it." It was like, "Wait, he's off sides." Wait, he's in. Ah. It was crazy. It was a crazy sequence. It was insane. Josh, Josh. And then was when standing. that Montiel handball, dude. Oh, dude, Got that me. was brutal. That was brutal. That, that was, was brutal, almost dude. that was almost natural body position, but it looked like he elbowed it. I think that was just I honestly yeah. think it was natural, but like the way it looked, it's it saved it. Like that was that I was okay. I was okay with that, you know. It is what it is. Um and then again, the bar exploded and we were in ecstasy for like 10 minutes. I don't know what I don't even know how many minutes it was, but for a brief moment we experienced ecstasy once more, and then we were brought back to level. And when I tell you that there were songs, there were chants, there was just an atmosphere that I had never experienced before that I think is unique to Argentine football. Don't get me wrong, there are other beautiful fan bases out there, like Borussia Dortmund has a beautiful one. I mean, there I'm sure there are more that I can't really name right now. Um but that was unique to my experience. I've never felt anything like that before. And then the penalty came and we fucking suffered again. And when we went to penalties, I'm telling you, I literally, I was standing, there was this guy with a mullet who was standing in front of me. And I was like looking over at my buddy to my left, who one of, one of the guys was, like, hammered, and he was just, like, going with the flow. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm sure he's a huge fan, but the dude was just going with the flow. He was singing all the songs. He didn't have any superstition. He wasn't suffering that much, which to me means I'm a bigger fan than him because my suffering was deeper than his. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whatever fucked up backwards Probably. logic that is. But there was another guy who was bald, and this dude was just – Standing like this, the entire, the entire, from, from when France equalized all the way to penalties, he was standing like this. So I was looking over at him when we went to uh, the 97th minute or whatever fucking extra time they added. And then I looked over to my right and the guy that was in front of me previously with the mullet, he was literally looking up like this. He was just standing like this. You know, the thing that Messi does whenever he scores a goal, he's like, that man was making his amends with God. He was like, I'll go to church every Sunday. I'm going to take my kids. I'm going to marry a Catholic woman. He's like, I'm going to stop fucking beating off. Like, I'm going to stop all the sins. He's like, I'll quit the vape. I'm done. All I'm not going to play Xbox all that mm -hmm. much. All of it, baby. Man was looking up, and that's where we all were. And then, like, we were grabbing what you do, right, is you grab the guy next to you, and you grab him right here, 
or like on the side, right? Like around the back, you grab them by the rib cage and you bring them in. So that you form like the wall when you jump, right? So I was fucking grabbing guys on the shoulder, some guys in front of me. And I'm telling you, it's everybody. There was an eight-year-old kid behind me standing on a table holding an Argentine flag. There was this dime, dime-ass Argentine woman standing on a stool five feet to my left. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And nobody was looking at her. Not a single person gave a single shit that she was standing on this bar. Everybody was glued to this little fucking three, four foot by two and a half foot TV up on the wall like some sociopaths. We were all like, oh, like dogs waiting for food, grabbing onto each other, sweaty, covered in fernet and in, in alcohol and beer and sweat. I smell like ass. I haven't washed this jersey in like a week and a half. No, not a week and a half, a month. This is, this is, it objectively smells terrible, right? I smell awful. I can right. smell it from here. You can smell it from <laughs> here. <laughs> it smells terrible. That shit stank. That shit stank. That being said, when those penalties went, man, Mbappe scored that first one. And then when Dibu got that second one. It was, it was madness. When I say that everything up until that point, all the good parts had been ecstasy, and then it was like quiet and like suffering and stress. When I tell you ecstasy, I mean ecstasy in the purest form of the word. Like when you think like heaven, that's what it was. Everybody, it was like a release. There was no beer thrown. Nothing was spilled. Everybody was grabbing each other, hugging, kissing people, like people that didn't know each other. Josh, your fucking brother, there was a girl standing next to him. She turned around. She started making out with him. I was like, I looked over. I was like, the penalties aren't even over yet. Hold on. You can't do this. Like, it was, Jesus no, no, no. But li listen, listen to me. It was love. It was, thank God my love. mother is not subscribed. Thank God your mother's not subscribed. But listen to me. It was love. Okay. It wasn't, it wasn't like, it wasn't dirty. It wasn't foul. It wasn't like lustful. It was like such a relief, such a release, such pure ecstasy. It's like when World War II ends, you know? That when like World War painting with like Dude, a sailor. Yeah, that is so eloquent. Yeah, it's that not is like so I'm trying eloquent. to bang. It's more just like, what else do you do? 100%. What else do you do? How else can you express this? So, yeah. People yeah. lost their minds, and the Dibu attacked the second one, and he fucking stopped that one. And and then what was it? Montiel made the last one, dude. Montiel, yeah, dude. takes his shirt off, yeah. I didn't. I didn't really realize how much it meant to these people. And I count myself as one of them, but I have the privilege of not having to experience the strife that a lot of them feel in that country. I can't really articulate how much it meant to them and how much it meant to us and to me right. for accepting me in that moment. Like there was... There was a Chinese guy there. His name, I couldn't pronounce his fucking name. God bless him. But his name was, he, he said, he told me like three times his name. And he was like, fuck it, just call me Tony. Because none of the Argentines could pronounce <laughs> his name. <laughs> it was like, fuck it, dude. Just call me Tony. So Tony. Uh, fuck it, I'm John. Querido, this fucking beloved Tony. The man had his shirt off. He was crying. He found me. The dude, honestly, he was too affectionate. He Damn. must have hugged me like 17 times. Damn. It was insane. And to see that the Argentines accepted him, like nobody was making fun of him. I was really scared when I first saw him because I saw him during the Australia game at this same bar. And I was really scared that I was going to hear like some racist 
things said, like, you know, whatever. Argentines, we're not the most PC. We're South Americans. I thought I was going to see some, like, offensive eye-pulling or something like that. No. You know what he was? He was El Chino Argentino. The whole day, he was the Chinese Argentine. The Chinese Argentine, yeah. El Chino Argentino. And people were grabbing him, hugging him. He was at a table with a bunch of Argentine dimes, and they were celebrating with him. Everybody was buying each other drinks. Like, the man lost his mind. He was one of us that day, and I was one of us. I was one of them. I was one of the many. And we left that bar, me and Josh, to meet up with my friend Danny and her boyfriend and this Argentine woman that I met. Um, and we got in the car and we were driving to Times Square. And when I tell you that there were 450 Argentines in that bar, at least, and it was packed, right? When I tell you that there were thousands on the street, I had my own family that lives in Buenos Aires text me. I don't know if you're in Buenos Aires or in New York City. I mean, I was in Times Square packed like there were people right next to me pushing me and hurting me and like elbows fly and like you know shit going everywhere and it was just insanity to see how much this meant to those people like you're not going to see the french do that you're not going to see the french do probably that. not no no offense to the at french. least not as much of like a uh national sentiment you know like i'm sure that yeah. the, there are pockets for sure yeah. but it won't be you know 90 percent plus of the population no no the psg ultras i'm sure you've got a beautiful culture i'd love to fucking watch a game with you guys i would i would murder somebody to watch a game with you guys a game with messi and Mbappe and neymar up front that would be singular in my life i would never forget that moment i'm sure that the french fan base is incredible but in new york I'm just not seeing that happen. Thousands. I don't think you understand what I mean when I say thousands. Maybe I can post something on the TikTok or the Instagram to make you understand. Thousands. Yeah. Times Square is a relatively small place compared to the larger New York City area. That being said, you can pack tens of thousands of people in there. And Argentines took up about 30% of that. It was insane. There were police there. People were standing on light poles. It was that shit you see on Bleacher Report when they're trying to incite violence in Philadelphia. That's the shit that I was seeing. And it was... It was singular, man. It was singular. I, I'm not going to lie to you. This is on my bucket list. This was like a bucket list sort of thing, but like... It's not a bucket list thing that I can control, you know, like. Right. I can't decide that I'm going to win the World Cup this year for Argentina, you know, like I can decide that you and me are going to go spend a year abroad living in Ireland or something. Or you and me are going to go fucking live in Brazil and speak Portuguese for a year and we're going to just become tri quadlingual. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That being said, I, I can't do that with this. And they did it. And it still hasn't hit me yet. Like, I've teared up a couple times, but, like, I'm going to ugly fat girl cry here in the next couple days. Like, <laughs> I don't know if that's cool for me to say, but, <laughs> dude, it's going to happen. I I'm mean, <laughs> I perfectly think I pictured what's going to happen. So I think you just added a descriptor in there that was necessary for me and everybody else listening to know exactly what you mean. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I appreciate that. You're enabling. I me. mean, skinny people and fat people look different when they when they cry. That's, that's it. Old people and young people look different when they cry, too. That's, that's true. We're going to stop stop using basic adjectives like that. Not on Deadball TV. Not on Deadball TV, baby. Dude, it was no, no, no. It was insane. I wish, I wish you and Jay could have been here. I wish you could have been here, big dog. You should have fucking been here. Lo mereciste. You deserve to be here. I wish you could have seen this fucking locura. 
It was incredible. I had 75 text yeah. messages when I finished the game. I was like, I can't. All my white friends were texting me. I was like, I got to prioritize this. So I went from darkest skin color friends to like lightest. I had to. As you should. I was like the disparaged, mm-hmm. the the minority, the minorities, the marginalized. They need to be responded to first because this was for them. Yes, they do. Mm-hmm. This Absolutely. is. Yeah. I'm trying to think like what else, what else I got to tell you about this. Like, um, you know what? I, I have Has your one, dad yeah. mentioned. Oh, no, I, w- I want you to say I want you to say. Okay. I, I have one point that I'd really like to make. And I think this is important. If Argentina doesn't win this, I feel like we fall into a period of international irrelevance that I don't know when we would break ourselves out of. It would take another talent like Messi to break us out of it. We would fall out of that. Argentina has existed and thrived on the blood of superstars like Lionel Messi and Diego Maradona. The only time we won a World Cup outside of that was in, I think, 78 it was. And even then, I don't know if we had superstars for the era. I don't know if we had superstars. I think we just had a good team overall. We've made it to finals outside of that. I think we have, what, three more finals? I think you're three and three. In We're finals. three and three. Hey, fifty percent of the fucking finals. That ain't bad, baby. I mean, that's not bad. That ain't bad. That ain't bad. Shit, that being said, I think if Argentina loses this, we fall into a period of international irrelevance. But now we have a very young squad to take over after Di Maria, after Papu Gomez. After Kun Aguero, after Lisandro Paredes, or Leandro Paredes, after Otamendi, after Lionel Messi, nobody's okay. Listen to me before you guys take this shit out of context. Nobody's replacing Messi. That being said, somebody's got to wear the 10. An Argentina without a 10, it doesn't exist. Somebody's got to wear the 10 after this. The fact that we won this brings hope to a generation of Argentine footballers. I don't know when we'll see the results about that. In nine months, we're going to see a huge population spike in Argentina. I can guarantee you that. That's what Jake said earlier today. I'm telling you, dude, the population is going to fucking 10% increase. Is gonna be. Y'all have the infrastructure for that? No, we don't. The inflation's crazy high. I'm about to text my cousins <laughs> and say, "Fucking wrap that shit up," because we can't. We no podemos aguantar eso. We can stand the French mm. for 120 minutes, but we can't stand ourselves for the next nine months. Like, please. Yeah. Um. That being said, I this is inspired a generation of Argentine footballers. Hopefully we see them. We've got some really good young players. Enzo Fernandez winning young player of the tournament. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. Don't get me wrong. I love Enzo. He played really well. I don't know if he deserved young player of the tournament. I don't know if he did. I love him. Maybe this is my river bias. I don't know if he deserved young player of the tournament, but who are they going to give it to? Who are they going to call in to come in during the final? Everybody else is at home. Everybody left. Do you want me to seriously answer this? Answer it. I think Vardy Ol should have been young player of the tournament. But I'm not upset that Enzo had it. I feel like top three... Would probably Enzo, Vardiol, and probably uh, what's number three? I was gonna say Gakpo, but like they didn't Gakpo. make it that far. But I mean, quarters, no, quarters but... is probably far enough. 
Yeah, they, look, they still That's played a, a hell of a he played a hell of a tournament up to that point. Netherlands does not get there without him. Yeah. That's true. You, you it's just you know me, dude. I love yeah. me a defender. Defenders yeah, get yeah, no yeah. love. I just think it would have been cool to be like because apparently right. there's no best defender award. I didn't know that. There's not that's madness. Not. Who do you think who do you think gets that's the bullshit. best defender award? If there was one. Um, I think it it would have to be okay. Maybe I'm a simp. It would have to be either honestly Couture Romero or Vardiol. I think would have to be the defender. You don't think Otamendi had a better World Cup than Kuti? No, I think Kuti had a little better one. I'll take that. I'll take whatever, baby. If Otamendi doesn't concede that penalty today, he gets it. But they were so neck and neck. That was just like one mistake. It just knocks him just there. And Kuti was so good, dude. You know what's you know what's bullshit is that Argentina could completely have closed out this game two to zero. A lot of French people are gonna be mad at me. We could have totally shut that shit down. Could have totally shut that shit down. We could have. We could have locked it down. Absolutely. Yeah, but we did that thing. We did that thing where we stop attacking. We let the French have an inch of breathing room. We let, uh, really, not the French, Mbappe. We let Mbappe have an inch of breathing room. And the man breathed life back into France. I'll tell you what. Argentina, you can relax when you go up 3-0. 3-0 is demoralizing. 2-0 leaves the door open. Cerra la puerta. Cerra la puerta con la tercera y después puedes meter a Lisandro Martinez. If you shut the fucking door on the third goal, then you can bring in Lisandro. But you cannot let them go up two to one. If there's one thing I've learned, one thing that my father has taught me, two to zero is dangerous because if you go to two to one, it's basically zero zero. Because they've got the momentum. Two to one is the most dangerous scoreline in football. Horrifying. Yes. And thank God. Thank God that we did what we did today to catch up and to supersede that 2 2. Because I think France scores that third one regardless. Easy. Easy. They get that third one regardless. So thank God that Leo Messi made that. That was a French mistake. That was not Argentine excellence. It was like a couple good passes and then French mistakes. That's what that was. Um, that being said, yeah, I think Uriz probably should have done better with that shot. He should have done better, but he's not. He's not incredible. He's not a phenomenal goalkeeper. Not anymore. His best days are behind him. Respect to him. Respect to him. He had a couple good sh uh, shot stops today. Um, they were mm -hmm. fairly easy, the ones that he did stop. Um, honestly, you he had a good save on Messi right before penalties, though. He that had long that good shot. Save on, he like yeah. knocks it over the bar. Uh, yeah, he did knock it over the bar. That's very true. That's very true. But to be completely honest, he should have seen that Di Maria goal coming. There is no world. He should have come out of goal. He he needs to he come should. off his line there. Well, if he comes off his line, he's got a pick between Alvarez and Di Maria. And if he goes up forward, like there's no way he can pick because the French defenders weren't on either of them, right? The French defenders were running up the middle to stop the cross. That being said, one of the French defenders should have ran out left to block Di Maria. And then Lloris could have come out. So I don't know if that was a yeah. French miscommunication or what, but I don't want to pin that all on him. Um, all in all, though, his best days are behind him. Um, I, I like him. I like him a lot. I think he deserves the French captaincy. I think he's a good captain for them. Um, but, yeah, he just made a couple mistakes, and uh, there's no reason that a player of his caliber – or who's supposedly at his caliber should be outplayed by Emiliano Martinez. I love Emi Martinez. He's not a phenomenal goalkeeper. He's not incredible. No. 
he is it seems like he's only world class when he plays for Argentina. In penalties specifically, I would say. In penalties specifically. But check this out. He was almost there. Every single goal that they scored, besides that second Mbappe penalty, he got a hand on. Mbappe's first penalty yeah, in the penalty shootout, he got a hand on it. The first Mbappe penalty in regular time, he got a hand on it. That second Mbappe goal, he got a hand on it. He was almost there. If the guy was 6'2", Instead of 6-1, he stops those. But it is what it is. It is what it is. And Yoris has no excuse. So, I don't know. Um, Maybe Tottenham better get in the hunt. I've been saying that for a couple years now. They don't listen to me. They need to get you on. If I was head of Tottenham player recruitment, we would have had Vardy on this bitch years ago. It'd be him and Kuti in the back. Dude, I'm telling you. I'm also Instead, telling- we got Davinson Sanchez. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, dude. Enzo Fernandez would have looked good on Tottenham. Enzo Fernandez would have looked good on Tottenham, but that man's going to Liverpool now. But if he went to Tottenham, dude... I think I, I I really think he could have gotten the best out of him. Tottenham, I mean. That would have been great. That would have been great. We need a uh, more offensive midfielder to join the team. But ain't nobody give a damn about Spurs right now. Um, no, nah, I want to ask talk. since since you guys finally got the uh, the monkey off your back. Do you think that? I guess I'm asking, does the first does the is the first cut always the deepest? Is the next World Cup when Argentina's back in it, are you going to be just as nervous or is there like some type of reassurance that like we got one in the bag? So even if we lose this time, it's not like horrible, you know what I mean? Did I ask the wrong question? No, you didn't. You just said we got the monkey off our back, and I just realized that I can sleep peacefully. And then we did get the monkey off our back, and then I can <laughs> I have a normal life again. I can go out and do things, and I don't have to fucking slave away to this. That being said, I would give my life for another six weeks of this. I don't know what's fucking wrong with me. <laughs> yeah. It was part of the, it's part of the DNA, like you said. It is. It, it, can't it really be is part of the DNA. Fun. It's not fun. It's not fun. You want another story time right now? My sister, she invited my dad out. I, I like called her a couple of days ago and I was like, What are you guys doing for the final? And she was like, Oh, well, I'm gonna go to so and so place and I'm gonna go out and such and such. And I was like, Are you leaving dad at home by himself? And she was like, Oh shit, you're right. Well, maybe I should invite him out. And then I told her i was like anna querida dad doesn't have fun watching these things he doesn't want to go out it's like what i tell you like guys jack would ask me like why the fuck doesn't bernard come out and watch these argentine games at our house or why can't we go over there and i was like why can't we you know why can't we do that it sounds incredible you know my fucking best friend over at my house for an asado that's a dream that's a dream. That is literally Argentine culture to a T. When I ask my dad, it's not a, oh, no, we can't have people over. It's not a, oh, no, you know, I don't want to, like, burden the house or I don't want to, you know, logistical issues. He would just look at me and he'd be like, he would, like, put his hands on his hips and he'd be like, ¿Sabes qué, querido? He would, like, dodge the question for years and then one day, I was like older and I was like, dad, what, what the hell? Like, why, why can't we do this? Like, why can't Jack come over? And he was like, he told me, he was like straight up. He was like, why don't you go over there? Because you know what? It's not fun for me when I watch these things. I don't have fun. When was the last time that you saw me smiling during one of these finals? When was the last time that I had a good time watching this? 
I don't want the Chad Boons to see me like this. I don't want anybody to see me like this. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I was thinking about it because we were on this fucking 28 year dry streak. And I was thinking about it and I was like, damn, Boca just what lost back to back Libertadores. I was like, you got a point. He had a point. I don't want nobody to see me like this. I was thinking about it. I was like, damn, what if I had like a girl over right now? She'd be, I, I literally wouldn't talk to her for 120 minutes. Like I just wouldn't talk to her. And then I'd be depressed. I'd be like, you should probably go home. Like it would be a disaster. And I was like, okay, that makes sense. So I told Anna, right. I was like, look, dude, dad's not coming out. You got to go to him. So then she was like, okay, yeah, I'll see what's up. And then I talked to Bernard on the phone last night at like 11, my dad, Bernard. And he was like, yeah, Anna invited me out to a bar. And I was like, <laughs> oh, I told her. And he was like, I know, I know, I know. He was like, but it was, it was a nice gesture. And I know she just wanted me to be there, but I can't do that. And I was like, I believe me, I know, dog. I ain't never seen you during an Argentina game outside of the living room. So <laughs> wild. Yeah. I don't even remember what we were talking about before this. No fucking clue. I don't remember either. Oh, basically, are you content for the rest of your life? Or do you want oh, to yeah. win one again? Um, I guess the reason I told that story is because it gives you the metric of what we feel for this and at least my upbringing in regards to this. My father and my grandfather have seen Argentina win two World Cups already. I've never seen that. So it hurts a little bit extra whenever they lose because I still have so much to prove, at least in my own heart. You know, I can sing all these songs, Brasil, Decime Que Se Siente, talking about it, Italy in the 90s. That's all well and good. That history is valid. Diego Maradona is valid, obviously. I didn't get to see that. I wasn't alive for that. I can watch all the replays I want. I can study and read all the books I fucking want. I wasn't there for that. Now that we have won this, I have a story to tell my kid or kids. I have a story to tell my friends. I have a shared experience with a nation that I have never lived in that I feel beholden to. Like these colors right here. I mean, I, I put them on before I put on the United States colors, you know, like it's insane. I feel more passionately about the Malvinas than I do about any situation in the Middle East, which is ironic, but it is what it is. You know, that passion has now been manifested. So if I'm being completely honest, I think it will be a little bit easier if we, if we lose the next one. That being said, if we crash out in the group stages, if we don't play to our potential, I'm always going to be disappointed. But they've done it. They've done it for me. The greatest of all time did it for me with some of my favorite players that I've ever seen grace the field. The only way that this could have been better is if Kun Aguero was on the team. Because that's the man that made me fall in love with soccer again. That's the man that brought me to the Premier League. I was watching soccer. I was going in and out. But when I saw him... And Sabaleta on Manchester City. And I, who else? Demichelis, I think, too. And then Otamendi. Demichelis was there near the end. Yeah, yeah. I was like, how can I not? There were more. There were more than that, too. I'm forgetting them, but there were more. Yeah, I can't. I can't remember the others, but there were. Insane, dude. Insane. They made me fall in love with it again. I, I love that team, but like, Di Maria. Di Maria. Oh, my God, Julian Alvarez now on Manchester City, keeping the Argentine tradition alive over there. Otamendi, the guy that everybody hated. They said they said he was trash. You said he was trash, and now the man's coming out having a banger of a World Cup against all odds. He was trash in the last World Cup, but this one he was good. That's just wrong. That's factually incorrect. And this one, everybody's just recognizing it now, so... Dude, we'll insane. roll the tape. We'll roll the tape. We'll roll You'll the never tape. convince me that 
Otamendi was good in 2018. I'm sorry. It doesn't happen. matter. He was good in 2022, and they can never take that from us. And that is why it will be a little bit easier to stomach not winning one in the United States in 2026. It's okay. Copa America will obviously mean a lot. And you know what? I'm going to bring this point up now because I've told you how I feel about the competitions coming up after this. At least how I feel now. That being said, notice how hard the Argentines cried after Copa America and notice their reaction in the World Cup today. Notice the difference. What does that mean? What does that mean? What does that look like? They collapsed. It collapsed to the floor during the Copa America in the Maracana against Brazil. Why? I've been thinking about right. this all day. I don't, I don't have an actual answer for those wondering. I don't have a point here. But I just want you to notice that. Notice how they fall to the ground and how they collapse and cry and how Neymar wept. Notice the tragedy that the Brazilians felt there. And of course, there was Brazilian tragedy this World Cup for sure. But the Argentines, maybe it just hasn't entered their head like it hasn't entered mine. But it, the gravity wasn't there. I think, I think maybe we didn't believe it ourselves. Or maybe, maybe against Brazil in the Copa America, it just meant more to break the streak. I don't know. I think that's what it is. I think it's because you guys broke the curse. And I think alleviating that pressure in a Copa America, which obviously means a ton to the people, against your arch rival, Messi's first major international trophy, you know, not counting like the Olympics that he has, I think, in like a U20 World Cup. I think that's why everybody collapsed. Especially given the context of how Argentina had lost in previous Copas. It was like God had had smited the Argentine national team. He had damned them to like never win it. And it was almost like overcoming fate to beat Brazil. It feels like Tottenham. It's the Cavs, dude. I think I'm slowly realizing Cleveland is basically Argentina if you just vacuum packed it into a can of tuna. We're the same. We're the same. Everybody fucking just bonds over the misery that is supporting these goddamn teams. Like, nothing could have meant more than LeBron winning the championship. My father is about, he's in his mid 60s. He's never seen the Cavs or the Browns win. And like, he couldn't even talk. And, like, I mean, I I honestly, I feel like I do rep Cleveland harder than I rep Houston. So, like, my, and you so do. my brother. So, like. It's all right. We were over the moon. Because that's culturally, dude. Like, culturally, we're like a we're like a northern household. You know what I mean? We got took- no, like, Hispanic culture at all in the house. It's straight Cleveland. No, you got it. That's Lake all you. Here, baby. That's all it that's is. That's you. That's you. That's you and Josh. You bring in that Hispanic culture in there. But I, I, I get what you mean. I used to struggle for years. Like, why is this dude, like, not a Houston fan? Like, he grew up. He was raised here. But you're right. Like, now that I think about it, I'm like. Oh, you'd be a big man. I used to be big mad. But, like, I think about it. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was pissed off. I was like, why? <laughs> you were like, I hate James Harden. And I'm like. Rockets would lose. And I'd be he's like. He's averaging 50 points a game. <laughs> and you'd be yeah. like, fuck that guy. It was like ah. that being said, like I'd be how like can, Warriors and Six. Yeah, you you feast off of the culture of your fathers in this sense, you know, like it's like the Spartans, you know. You imagine a Greek guy being raised in, you know, some farm outside of Athens, and everybody's like, Oh, well, why don't why are you acting so Spartan? And he's like, Well, my dad's from Sparta. And you're like, Yeah, but you were raised here. Like, no, fuck you right here that's what matters in my house this is how we speak this is how we act this is the culture we uphold and you're right in your house 
It's calves. It's browns, baby. So you fucking die. That's the dog house. You're right. Yeah. Dog pound. The yeah. dog pound. Thank you. The dog pound, baby. <laughs> before the Browns fans come for you, I had to save you before, that. Before the Browns fans come for me. But, I mean, you have that energy. You guys would jump into the neighbor's pool when it was like 30 degrees outside. You guys would, you know, go for runs and like the blistering cold. You know, you guys are rough and rugged in all the ways that a lot of people aren't. I guess that that's that Browns mentality. That's that Cleveland mentality, you know? That's the it dog is. pound. You're going to go out and watch a shitty game in a shitty stadium with a shitty team <laughs> in 20-degree weather while it's snowing. 20-degree weather. You're going to yes. hate every minute Ross of it. The hemp straight. And Argentina is going to go and watch us yeah. lose to fucking Saudi Arabia 2-1 to one and pay $10,000 to do it. And we're going to love every minute of it, baby. <laughs> I guess you and I both uh, kind of took a, took after our dads. You know, our moms aren't really like sports women. So your, that's, your I mean, that's probably why. My mom's from Houston. But she, she doesn't give a damn. No, but she likes football, right? She's kind of been like, uh, what do you call it? Converted. But she kind of liked the the Cowboys because there were no Texans when she grew up. But I think when she saw how much my dad cared, I mean, it's kind of like Pia on the phone saying like, ganamos, like we won, but she's Peruvian. She didn't win. You know, if we're going to be literal about it, y'all didn't even make the World Cup. But she's saying we won because she knows yeah. like how much yeah. it means to your dad and you. So she's like, fuck it. I'll, I'll renounce at least my Peruvian fandom and, you know, I'll, uh, I'll assimilate into the madness that is Argentine football and culture. I'm a level with you. I'm a level with you, dude. We've shared a whole wealth of experiences. We have a podcast together. I don't ever see a moment in my life going forward where you're not a part of it. You're my best friend on the face of the planet. Um, we have a wealth of shared experiences. If you were a Cowboys fan, I'd fucking hate you. We would not be friends right now. <laughs> and I don't even like football that That's much. That's understandable. But fuck the Cowboys. <laughs> it's like it's like equivalent to being like a Real fan or something. Like, I don't know. It's just I, just I don't know, do bro. It. I've Out ever since ever since we've been watching watching Ramos, I got mad respect for Real. Like fuck Real, but like Oh, Ramos is the goat. Ramos is the goat. It's a fucking go, dude. I can't help but think that Spain would have made it further if they had Ramos. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Oh, I'll I'll yell that to the cows come home all day. That was a, that was the biggest mistake they made. If the U.S. men's national team had Sergio Ramos, we might uh might meet Argentina in the quarters. Well, now Luis Enrique has all the time in the world to get on his Twitch streams. All the time in the world. Before he comes over to join Mexico. That would be incredible. That would be incredible. I don't see it. I mean, you know I want Gareca. I'm taking Gareca. I'm sorry. I just feel like he fits better. everybody. But if we get Luis Enrique, am I going to be mad? No. You guys you guys deserve it. There were there was an Ecuador, Ecuadorian guy, and I met some Venezuelans uh, today at a bar. They bought me a beer when I really did not need a beer. But Jesus, I drank it, and they were crazy, but... I mean, I told Ecuador, I was like, you guys, you guys are up next. Mexico's up next. Like, you guys deserve it. You know, your infrastructure is just fucked. If you can get those guys to put that shit aside, the corruption aside, the the keeping everybody domestic and, like, slaving them away in Liga MX, no offense to Liga MX, it's a beautiful league. There's some beautiful football there, but some of these guys are too talented for that. It's like, it's like... uh La Liga Primera de Argentina. Like, you can't keep those guys there. You can't keep them. You got to get them out. Imagine if Julian Alvarez had re-signed for River. He wouldn't have played like he did. He wouldn't have been as good as he did. These River guys who are losing their mind are playing well because they've gone and they've gotten education from better coaches, from more talented coaching organizations from more talented clubs than our countries have to offer. 
And that is what it is. In that sense, Europe dominates. But in the international sense, I'm going to bring it home. This year, 2022, belongs to South America. Now, when I tell you that I got a South American, 20 Brazilian, a Brazilian, oh, 20 fucking years, dude. Well, I got a Brazilian woman on the phone right now texting me. Telling me she's going to wear the Argentine jersey. That's crazy, dude. That is crazy. Don't let her, 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 don't let her dad hear that. Good Lord. Can't say her name on the pod. She's going to be, that passport's getting revoked immediately. I can't believe that. That's crazy. It is crazy. I couldn't believe it. That's crazy. When my computer died earlier in the episode, my PC died and we had to take a break. I saw that text message. I was like. How am I supposed to get back on the pod like this? Dude, that's lunacy, dude. That's like catching my dad in a Steelers jersey. It's just like, he'd rather die. He'd be like, take me out back. Just take put me, me out back. No, but you're Not right. Good. Like, think about it. Like, if you're Brazil right now, you got to pick between your arch rivals, Argentina, or France. You got to hate the French in that sense. Like, I met some French fans today. They were super nice. They were super nice. I was ready to get into some trouble with some French fans. I was ready. I thought somebody was going to get pissed. Kudos to the French. You guys have a humility and a acceptance of defeat that I did not expect. And I was surprised. And I wish Argentina had that kind of pride and honor in defeat. That being said, how can you root for them? How can you root for them as a South American? You you have you have to root for the South Americans. I think if Brazil went up against France or England, you got to pick Brazil. As an Argentine, if if we met Brazil in the semifinals and they beat us and they went up against France or England, you got to pick Brazil. I got to pick Brazil. Yeah. Who it's fucked, Shit. but I have to. I mean, that's why I was rooting for Morocco so hard. Because at one, they were playing beautiful football, and it was great to see an African team make a run like that. Legendary. Fourth place. I mean, fourth place is nothing to turn your nose up at. For a continent that's unproven like that, kudos to the Moroccans. Kudos to the Morocco. You guys deserve kudos and much more. Some people might even say you deserve the bronze medal. That being said, it is what it is. Looking forward to future competitions. Now I'm looking forward to the Cup of Nations. Again, finally. Yes. Maybe we'll be grossly disappointed again. Who knows? I'm going to go into it optimistic i am too i am too baby i am too (sighs) i'm exhausted this was a completely draining experience like it's just crazy it's absolutely crazy and i've never even seen mexico make it to a fucking quarterfinal so like i don't even know what i would do in that situation I was I was on the Japan hype train, dude. Those are those I are my guys. Too. I applied Everybody for citizenship. Was. I was ready to go, dude. I thought they were going to do it, man. Make the quarter. I did not win at all, but I thought they were going to make the quarters and end up losing on pens. It's just crazy. Like I don't understand. Like I'll never understand to that degree because this this should be the last thing we got to talk about. Then honestly, I got to go to bed. Um, but it's like. Work. I don't know. As a Mexico fan, I can't even comprehend how certain fan bases feel where it's like a quarterfinals exit is like an abject failure. Like fire the coach, make the players retire. Disgusting. Like, oh, you got bronze at the World Cup. Waste of a golden generation. Scrubs. You know, you guys have let the country down. I'm like, Jesus, I just want to see a quarterfinal. I would love for Mexico to win a Copa America. I, I would I'd probably pass out. 
if they win a Copa America. Live on stream, I'd just pass out. Yeah, valid. Luis Chavez, 20-yard banger, I'd pass out. Like, I just don't even... It's, like, fun to to a degree because you're like, oh, let's say the Browns like, dude, we suck. Like, yeah, let's let's see what we can do today. But on the other hand, it's like, damn, it would be nice if we were, like, actually elite. You know what I mean? Like, have those expectations. To, like, go into a World Cup and be like, okay, we might not be the favorite, but we're, like, the fourth favorite. Like, that's just a foreign – and especially as, like, a Spurs fan, too. My only fucking team that wins anything in in soccer is Atletico. And that's, like, the – Dark arts, dirty Simeone masterclass football. Injure the other team, slow the game down, only 20 minutes of the ball actually being in play. Like, just ugly. I love it. But, like, internationally, I mean, dude, the best Mexico team I ever saw, in my opinion, the best Mexico team I ever saw gets fucking spanked 7-0 to Chile in the Copa America. It's just like done, coach fired, absolute shambles ever since. Yeah. And I, I'm not you, even asking you a question. I'm really just talking out loud right here. Bro. No, talk talk out loud. Those those guys deserve more though. You're right. That team, that team was pretty stellar. That team was uh they they deserved a lot more than that. And um I think they were the only reason that that happened was not due to any Mexican fault. It was due to a truly exceptional Chilean side that put a really exceptional Argentine side down two times in a row in the span of two years. Like, it is what it is. You know, they beat the greatest of all time, Leo Messi, twice. How's 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 Mexico going to compete with that? You know what I'm saying? Like... Yeah. No 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 tea, no shade to to Mexico, but I mean it comes to the caliber and the ranking and the quality of these teams, you know. Mexico was not a world-class side. Even though they were a truly exceptional Mexico side, they came up against a Chilean side that would have given a lot of European teams a, a run for their money. Mm. You know? Mm-hmm. And they had the I mean, momentum. I want to say that Chile makes it to the round of 16 at the World Cup, if I recall correctly. I think they do make it to the round of 16 and then lose. But they I make it out the group. They make it out the group. I don't I feel like they I feel like they lose to like Switzerland or somebody in the round of 16. Something regardless. Like that. I mean, that's that, classical, it's classical South American ego loss. You know, it's not like they just weren't prepared. They were like, we're better than these guys. And they fumble. It was a fumble, for sure. Keep talking. Um, I want to say lost two nothing. Let's hear it. I want to see. It was Brazil. Round of sixteen, they lost three two on penalties. Well, if you're gonna lose to anybody, damn. Who did Brazil lose to in that World Cup? 2014? Brazil to Germany, 7-1. No, 2018. Oh, in 2018, they lost to Belgium 2-0. Word. You're like an encyclopedia with that shit. It's insane. Guys, I wish. That's because every time I I say anything marginally incorrect, everybody in the comments is like, you fucking idiot. So I'm scarred. I'm like, man, fuck you. I'm gonna learn everything then. No, you've always. I'm like, been bitch, like I'm, go- I'm looking through the 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 annals of Afcon history. I'm like, who won in 1948? Let me look this up. I I uh, vividly. Yes. You guys want like a Zambia. small anecdote again? I remember one time I was reading a uh, a newspaper article that you and your family had saved. It was you guys were in your house after Hurricane Harvey, like the new the new house that you guys stayed in for a while. And uh, we had not Hurricane Harvey, one of the hurricanes, Katrina, maybe. Which one was it? Ike, 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 Ike. Ike. It was after Hurricane Ike. You guys were in that uh, house for a while, and you had saved me a newspaper about the Broncos. And I was reading this newspaper, you know, full of, like, players that 
I had like kind of knew about because I was like a moderate. I still am a pretty moderate Broncos fan. Um, but I was reading about this and like trying to metabolize some of these guys. And you and my dad were talking about football while Scott was there. So you, my dad, and Scott were talking about football, and you like listed off like four or five Broncos players that I'd never heard of. And I was like, damn, I didn't know you knew the Broncos like that. And you were like, I don't, I don't even like them that much. You just had those fucking names in your lexicon. I say this to let everybody at home know that Jack has an encyclopedic knowledge of sports lineups. He can just do that. And it pisses me off to no end. Cause how am I supposed to sound like I fucking understand <laughs> anything when this man just rolls this shit off the tongue, you know, I'll do all the research that I want, but you can list the Ecuadorian starting 11 and the Japanese starting 11 with perfect memory. And I'm like, I'm having trouble pronouncing some of these motherfuckers names. And I speak the language of one of the teams. What is that? <laughs> it pisses me off. Jesus. I don't know, dude. It was Madden. That was how I knew the Broncos players. I think with this stuff, just ever since we started Deadball TV, I just read so much shit. Like, I follow so many, like, different journalists on Twitter. So do I, I bitch. To so do YouTube I, but channels. it doesn't stick in my fucking brain like you, okay? You can be as fucking humble and say, oh, I put the work in. You got that shit. You got the memory is the most base form of intelligence, but it's the most important part, too. It's like if you've ever seen Goodwill Hunting, you remember the part where she's like having lunch with him while she's studying her fucking, you know, physics homework or what the fuck ever. And she's like, I really got to study for this. And he's like, I really want to go on a date with you. And she's like, well, I don't have time. And he's like, what if I do your homework for you? And he does it in five minutes. And she's like, how did you do that? And he's like, I did this shit just comes easy to me like Mozart. I'm not saying you're Mozart. So before that goes to your fucking head. You're damn right. All right. Everybody oh at home, God, Jack's, dude, Jack's a fucking saying. idiot. Before we get it, let's get one thing straight. He's a fucking <laughs> idiot. He just remembers the names really well. That's all I'm trying to say. You big mad right now. I say you're moderately neurodivergent. How about that? How's that for a PC way of uh, explaining this? You know, bitch, you need you better root for Mexico in the next World Cup because I was rooting for Argentina in this one and the last one and 2014. So when the hell are you going to return the favor? Let the people know. I want you. All right. You want the you want me to let the people know? I'm going to tell you right now. Listen closely, everybody. Let us know. The only thing I support coming out of Mexico is the fucking tortas and tacos and salsa <laughs> and la comida. <laughs> Todos los otros mexicanos se piden, joder, vamos a Argentina, carajo. Now I'm playing. I like Mexico. I like Mexico a lot. You guys deserve a lot more. The this is why Mexico people. hates Argentina. This is. This is. That right there. No, I'm right playing. There, I'm playing. Mexico is a beautiful country. Gorgeous women, like jaw-droppingly gorgeous women. Yes. Um, fantastic culture, mm -hmm. fantastic food. And honestly, your football culture deserves more. So hopefully you get Gareca. Hopefully you get a Gareca. You need a Scaloni. You need a renaissance in the coaching and the infrastructure that merits the talent that is available in your beautiful country. Okay? That is what you need. And I will once, once, you know what, you know what I need is I need a player to get behind. I need a player to become a fan of. I was a huge fan of Raul Jimenez. Unfortunately, what happened to him happened. And it is what it is, but I was a huge Raul Jimenez fan. I was, I was, I was a Wolves fan for a while, for a while. You made me a Wolves fan. I was very excited for them, but what happened happened. So I need another guy that I can get behind right now because right now Mexico doesn't have any stars that I can really root for, at least in my head. So that that's what it's going to take for me to truly root for them. That being said, I always want the best for Mexico. I mean, when you guys, how am I not going to root for Mexico against Germany in 2018? Are you kidding me? I love that. 
my dad was screaming at me from the other room, and that man hates Mexico. But when they beat Germany, he was like screaming. He was like, ah, carajo, con ah. Losing his fucking mind. We were Mexicans <laughs> that day. Okay, so round of 16, 2026 World Cup, Mexico, Ireland. Who are you going for? On paper, Ireland, that being said, no, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. I don't Jake. know anybody on the team, really. I don't know any Irish players. So I would have to go just based on my fucking genealogy. That being said, if there's a Mexican player that I really like at the time, I'm going for Mexico, baby. I don't know. Ireland, I've got them in rugby. They're my rugby team, obviously. Have to. They're a beautiful team. Fucking look, Tyg Furlong is an absolute freak. Love him. I got some big boys. Yeah. He's a big boy. He's a marvel of genetic engineering. How a 300 pound man can run that fast and be that agile, I will never know. Never know. Never understand that. That being said, I have no idea about any players on their football team. All I know is that Jack Grealish and Declan Rice should be on the team, and they're not. So. Well, based on that completely unsatisfactory answer, uh, I'm going to have to declare that I am Team Ecuador for the next World Cup, and you can go fuck yourself. Especially you would now that be you anyway. You would I ain't be got anyway, a room for baby. you anymore. You would be anyway. You got it. The, I know the you, sympathy bitch. is gone. I know you, but there was never any sympathy. There was never any sympathy, bitch. I know you. I know you. Don't cover me like that. I was I was very sympathetic to the Argentine cause in 2014 and 2018. Except you constantly, I was going to say something foul about Otamendi, turned me off to the 2018 team. So I will admit that my support was minimized for that tournament. But 2014... I fully wanted it to be a Mexico-Argentina final, and of course you guys lose, but I was rooting for Argentina. Yeah, But that 2018 no, was weren't. so ass, I couldn't do it. But in the Copas, fuck Chile. I fuck wanted Chile. Argentina to win every single one of those. This was before yeah, I even God. knew about Ecuador. That's my new girlfriend. Well, okay, look, but I can't root for Mexico in the Gold Cup. But now Cup. I know about it. I can't root for Mexico in the Gold Cup. It's fucking USA. I have to. I have to do USA. You don't have to. I do. You're taking the easy I way out. I do have to. No, it's not the easy way out because we fucking suck. We sucked for years and I still Me cheered us on. Mexico ain't better. <laughs> I rooted for Mexico in the Gold Cup that they fucking, what are they, lose to Jamaica? You remember that one? I was a Mexican fan then when we were in Maine. They've lost to Jamaica. Didn't they beat Jamaica in the final? Was it? Did they beat Jamaica in the final? Was that 20, 2015? Dude, we got to do a story time about that on the uh, Dead Ball TV after hours. We could do a deep dive. That was a disaster. That was a disaster. And then the both coach for the Mexican punched. national team and oh yeah, the coach punched somebody <laughs> out of the airport. Fucking damn it! Yep. Yes, he did. We got to save that. All right. I really got to go to bed, so I'm just going to ask yeah, you no. one thing. Yeah. And take as, take as long as you need to answer this question. Is Messi better than Maradona now? What are you saying? What's Bernard saying? What's Grandpa Brian saying right now? You so still it looks like your computer died again. It didn't it? Didn't I'm here? You really got me between a rock and a hard place here. We asked the tough questions here. 
You're really going to make, you know what? You know what? I'll, I'll, I'll answer this. I'll answer this. And I don't want to answer this, but I'm going to tell you what I'm feeling right now because I kept you guys on the that's, fucking, that's fair. I kept you guys on ice every time you asked me for an Argentina score prediction. So I'm going to do this for the channel and for you, bitch ass. So be fucking thankful. Thank you. Because I'm going to be betraying a whole lot of shit right here when I tell you that Lionel Messi is the greatest player on the face of the planet and he's the greatest to ever do it. He is the most incredible soccer player that has ever graced this earth and the things that he has done with the football at his feet, with Argentina, and with Barcelona, with PSG, with the Ballon. I don't think they will ever be replicated. You can score as many goals as you want, Holland. You can score as many goals as you want, Mbappe. You don't do it like this. You put Mbappe on that 2014 Argentina team, nothing changes. You put Mbappe on this Scaloneta, nothing changes. Or, yeah, they don't win. You put Mbappe on the uh, 2018 Argentina team, they don't win. They don't. They don't. France has a spectacular squad. No shade to Mbappe. Takes a whole hell of a lot of mental fortitude and a goal-scoring proficiency and desire for a goal that almost cannot be rivaled. That being said, look at what Holland's doing. Where's Holland? He's in the Manchester City training ground. Because guess what? He doesn't have the cream of the crop from Africa to back him up. Y'all can come at me in the comments. I'm here for it. Let's talk about it. Because guess what? The entire Argentine selection, Argentino. Give me one immigrant that we've got there. Argentinos. Totales. Puros. Not like me. I'm a mutt. Everybody there? Argentinos, puros. Garnacho is, is one of the only ones. And guess what? Not in the selection. What's he mixed with? Spanish. Oh, okay. And even Messi. Messi was on the... He was más o menos, but he was born in Argentina. Rosario. So? Oh, he's Argentine. He's yeah. Argentine. No, the Spanish lost that one... In court long ago. They did. And and so yeah, I'm I'm gonna stick with that. Lionel Messi. Los siglos de los siglos es el mejor. And then comes Maradona. Nobody else drags Argentina to, to multiple finals by themselves and then wins one of them in eighty six. Maradona is incredible. We don't have to talk about him right now. Messi did the same thing against better competition with arguably a less dynamic side. I think that's fair. Now, this this year, he had help, oh, I, obviously. 2022, he had help. But the fact that he got to that final in 2014, incredible. The fact that they dragged themselves to the quarterfinals against France in 2018, that Argentina side was shit. Look at me. I love them. I love them. They're my children. I think, it was, I think it was round of 16. Round of 16. Fuck. I think it was round of 16. Was it round of, yeah. or was it the quarters? It was a worse than that, but. No, they beat Uruguay in the quarters. It was bad. Anyways, the point stands. Damn. The point is we lost to France. <laughs> The winners of the World Cup, four to three. Arguably France's hardest matchup in the entire World Cup. Well, I mean, you know who? Lionel Messi is the reason for that. The only reason for that. And, and that's what I've got to say. Those are my thoughts on the subject. I can't wait to hear your thoughts in the comments. I cannot wait. I'm ready for them. I want to hear your dad's. I want to hear. I gotta my make dad's it up too. there, up north. I gotta talk to him about it. 
you gotta i'm gonna i'm gonna talk to him hopefully sometime tomorrow and get his thoughts get his thoughts my my grandpa is kind of skewed because when he got covid the fucking brain fog or whatever that you get from that he lost a lot of his memories so i called him today and i was like do you remember when we were jumping up and down to the living room screaming a la final when we beat uh the dutch on penalties in 2014 and he was like i have no recollection of that and i was like well i'm gonna remember that for my entire life so i'll i'll hang on to that damn damn but i yeah. didn't know he had some memory loss from that yeah it's, I, things are foggy we don't have, i mean that's not he's okay like he's fine he just doesn't remember shit sometimes like it's not dementia or anything it's just a little bit of brain fog thank god could be a lot worse yeah. I don't yeah. want to talk about that though. The point is, oh, for sure. The point is, Messi is the best to ever do it. So I don't know that that would be a Bernard conversation for sure. Maybe honestly, maybe we can get Dad on here to debate that, to talk about that. That would be legendary. That would be legendary. You guys, I think you guys would like Bernard. That would I be want, legendary. I want Jake to meet Bernard. That is like my dream. That would be sick. That would be sick. I feel like your your dad would just drop some like knowledge dimes. He would some like random step over that he remembers Maradona doing in the group stage against Senegal that no one else would ever bring up in a conversation. He'd have something like that. So when I tell you that this man has not a photographic memory about that shit, but Honestly, yeah, he kind of does, but his storytelling capacity, like he told me about this story when Argentina was playing Nigeria and Diego had like a set piece and Canigia, the striker, was left open to the left on the left side of the field. And this man described it in such detail about how Canigia, the TV caught him. He knew he was open because the Nigerians forgot about him. And the way that Canigia screamed, Diego, Diego. He was like screaming at him, the inflection, the face, everything. Perfect. Bernard described it in perfect detail. I think you guys would like it. I think it'd be a fun story time. He's, he's got some of those. He's very much, I mean, I am the way I am because of the way he is. A lot of my arguments are anecdote based. Go fucking figure. Because Bernard's the same way. He's just got, you know, 40 years of experience on me. Your dad is a phenomenal storyteller. He's really good at that shit. <laughs> Bitch, just say yes. I don't know what yes. you're about to say. Just agree. Yes, he is. True. Yes, 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 he is. He's my dad. He, I fucking love him, of course. Of course he is. He tells some ghost stories sometimes. Even I'm like, damn, this is kind of scary. You I'm know what I... At the dinner table. Yeah, I'm like looking yeah. over my shoulder. You do those ghost stories that he's got. Maybe but we'll do that on an after hours. Remind us. Remind us in the comments if you want to hear my dad's yeah. ghost story because I I tell it pretty well, too secondhand. But that that ghost story that he has about the guy in Hawaii that killed himself, it's bone chilling. That's crazy, bone dude. chilling man. It is. You remember it that? Freaks shit? me out. Oh, yeah. I still I still mm -hmm. think about that. It's fucking crazy. I told that at a campfire for a friend's birthday. We went to the Catskills up here. I told that, and everybody freaked out. It was, it was cool. It was cool. Yeah, that's gonna. Be, we we got to get this dead this uh, dead ball TV after hours thing. The people been asking for it. They've been asking for a lot. Hopefully, this stream is actually like good quality for y'all. I said f yeah. you to the old platform we were using. Also, busted out the old gaming computer. This is not a laptop, as y'all can see. The camera angle is a lot different. Maybe some of y'all didn't notice. You ain't been watching that closely. Um, but uh, basically, I'm deleting the channel. This doesn't sound good. So um, we're going to end it there, going on almost two hours, guys. If you enjoyed uh, listening to Connor's captivating retelling of what it was like inside a Argentine bar in the middle of the Bronx during the World Cup final, leave a like in the video. And uh, Middle of Manhattan. Middle of Manhattan, baby. There, people. We ain't going to the Bronx. We're oh, Manhattan. Manhattan. I, forgot, I forgot you live with the big money. Big money down in uh, Midtown. That's where you were. Probably $80 a beer. 
That is why you broke all the time because you're going 15, out in the wrong place. Fifteen dollars for a Fernet and Coke. Fifteen fucking dollars. They didn't give you fifty percent off, dude. That bar made ten grand today. Holy shit! That bar made more than ten grand. That bar made probably, probably fifty. I would say profit. Holy shit! Next time I'm in New York in February, we got to go back. I mean, not that there will be any Argentina games. No, but I'll, I'll actually bring let me check the calendar. Maybe there's an international break. Dude, fuck it. I'll, and I'll invite them all. I'll invite them all. I'll invite them all there. We'll make it happen. Yeah, dude, we're going to figure this out. Yeah, they, they have nothing released after the World Cup, and why the fuck would they? Um, but anyways, guys, yeah. Also, let, let's let's get some other Argentine stories down below in the comments. You know, where, yeah. where were you when Argentina completely capitulated and where were you when they won on penalties? Tell us. Let tell us, us your stories. Okay, we got to get some more stories that we weren't there for. If you're there during the La 86, 78, tell us. Tell us. We want to hear them. Yeah. And I'm going to remind you guys again. I should have done this in the beginning. My bad. I fucked that up. We are doing a Christmas Q&A. So, guys, questions down below. I'm getting a little scared. We got like 50 plus questions now. Holy shit. And I don't know if they're going to slow down. Yeah. We had like seven in the first day. I was like, okay, this looks manageable. And then I guess everybody found the post and it's just been madness ever since. Send send Um, more in. But yeah, guys. We'll do them. Send them in. We're going to answer literally as many as we can before we pass out uh, on stream live for you guys. And um, just want to. Final uh, wrap up here by saying it's uh, the end of the World Cup. Argentina, world champions. Um, it's uh, as God intended. Unfortunately, though, if your girlfriend has not been subscribed to Deadball TV, she missed the whole goddamn tournament. And she missed one of our teams winning the tournament, which it might take another 28 years before that happens again. So she done fucked up. Now, if you don't want her to bottle it again for the Copa America, the Gold Cup coming up, maybe that will mean something again. Asian Cup, fuck it. We talking about Japan. You need to send her the channel immediately. Am Even I right, just your, your daily driver. It's the Premier League. Premier League. We're going to be talking about that too, obviously. I mean, some of these teams are crazy. You bet your ass I'm going to be watching Brighton with great interest from my boy McAllister. We're going to be watching Manchester City for Julian Alvarez, Holland. I mean, the guys are free. We're going to cover club things, your daily drivers. You want to have something that you can talk about on Saturdays with your girlfriend. You need a common interest. If you got to call your grandma, you know she's hype after this World Cup. Give her something to watch because I know you're not calling her Sunday mornings. I know you're not calling your grandma Sunday mornings. So give her something she can do for 90 minutes. Every Sunday mornings, you son of a bitch. I'm not calling mine. Mm -hmm. You're not calling yours. Let's be honest with each other. Give her something to do. We can help her get there. Okay? We're here. We're in this together. We're back. We're back at it. We'll do like an intro to soccer. So I'll do a soccer for dummies thing. We'll get out a whiteboard. We'll talk about what a 443 is. Okay? Or 442, 433. (laughs) <laughs> hey, 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 uh cut that cut that in post uh that's what we're here for. that's when the we're keeper comes you. out and plays as a midfielder yeah um who, who knows what we're going to talk about i don't even know what the next video is going to be i mean i need a day off i'm gonna tell you that you do need a day off. we're all gonna get a day off we're gonna now, be right finally. back at it though we're gonna be right back at it baby yeah we're out of here yeah maybe maybe we do one more world cup like best moment or like favorite moment yeah. or something like that but like we'll do one with all i'm three done analyzing the games yes don't ask me like hey what you think japan got wrong tactically against costa Rica? i don't give a damn anymore I'll give a i'm damn. done i'm tired go watch the live stream it's up you know the last thing That's i gotta I say, to say is y ya lo ves, y ya lo el que no salta es mbappe Y ya lo ves, y ya lo ves, el que no salda es un francés. 
Signing off, baby.